What's up everybody? I hope you're well. I'm super excited about this video. It's been in the works for a while. So basically Chris, you all know Chris, right? He sent me this little track he wrote and I orchestrated it in the style of a Disney ballad. In this video we'll be talking about the arrangement. As always, files for this project are already available on my Patreon, so check that out if you're interested. Chris will be covering some of the compositional aspects on a separate video on his channel and stay tuned for a little interview segment at the very end of the video. So let's start! How do you orchestrate a song in the style of a Disney ballad? This is true for any genre of music and to be truthful, you know, most of the points we'll be making can be considered good general rules for arranging a song in general. Any part of the arrangement should be built around it or inspired by the vocals, even the busiest moments like this one, for example. If we could work it out, set our differences aside, Come together, we'll go wherever we're needed, we won't hide if we would work it out. Most of the times the orchestra will be in a supporting role, either accompanying the vocals or creating textures like we're hearing here. This is the very last chorus and it's meant to sound big, you know, we're near the climax of the song but the orchestra never really gets in the way of the voice. We basically only really have a couple of different parts, a string arpeggio for texture and some chords on brass. Also, and this is quite important, and when the general advice kind of becomes a little bit more specific to the genre, you'll oftentimes hear the orchestra picking up the vocal melody. It's quite common to have different instruments alternating each other, doubling the melody either in unison or in octaves or both. That helps keeping up the momentum, but most importantly, we are creating contrast by using different timbers to color the vocals. This type of sound to me is probably the more recognizable device and you know the one trick you can easily pick up straight away is going to make the arrangement sound much richer and more complex than it really is without much of an effort. Now there will be moments when the orchestra kind of takes over. You'll hear sometimes a hint of a second melody and this can be super effective but has to be used sparingly and most importantly in strategic places. Like near the end for example you could get away with writing a simple melody that goes over the top of everything else and that's of course because you know by then you would have heard the chorus a couple of times. You could do this earlier in the song as well, but once again, be careful. Simple intervals, you know, basic rhythm, basically trying to fill the blanks without, you know, getting in the way too much. In a song like this, uh, oftentimes, not always, but pretty much always, <laughs> there will be moments where there's no vocals at all and you should take full advantage of this opportunity and let the orchestra take over, like here, for example. Again, Otherwise, my number one rule would be less is more, which is obviously applicable to any genre of music. My second step to produce a Disney style arrangement like this would be using colorful orchestration. Let's talk about that. It's so, so easy to go overboard with this. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Runs and trills and bells and gliss and stuff like that. This is what a Disney style track is, you know, normally associated with, but I honestly think there are, you know, much better ways that don't make the music instantly sound cheesy. Unless, you know, that's what you're going for, of course. I mean, use them. Use flourishes if you like them. I did use them myself. And that's simply because it's not something you can entirely avoid. But what I'm trying to say here is, you know, just 
go easy, yes. So what's the alternative then? How do you make, you know, an arrangement sound pretty without too many embellishments and things like that? The key to Disney's success is how it often evokes nostalgia with its media. I didn't make this up. Uh, there's a bunch of super interesting readings and videos online. You can go and look them up yourself uh, if you don't believe me, but uh, yeah, nostalgia. And if you can manage to inject a little bit of that into the music, you're gonna be like 80% of the way. That was a completely random number. Nothing dates the music like a little bit of woodwinds, so go nuts. Seriously though, doing an arrangement that is going to be more strings and woodwinds oriented is going to help a lot. And in general, woodwinds are not just great at flourishes, but you know, at counter melodies. Like this one, for example. Away from the problems and the battles that we've got. And strings are great in all circumstances, of course. But once again, if the goal is making the music, you know, pretty with a hint of nostalgia, a fantastic way of doing this is using some denser close part harmonies, like here, for example. They also sound particularly authentic when they harmonize a vocal line. And this may not be something you necessarily want to do when you're arranging a regular pop song where you would normally have a string pad instead. This does not mean that you should avoid brass altogether though. In fact, I use quite a bit of that, particularly the French horns. It's just not the focus of the arrangement as they tend to have a more majestic, heroic kind of vibe, but they're still great for chords and support to the rest of the orchestration. French horns and trombones, in fact, are excellent at playing at low dynamics to add warmth in the low end. Trumpets are much, much trickier to use though. They tend to stick out more than any other instrument, and for this particular reason, I haven't used them at all. It's not, it's not like a big no-no, but you know, it's just very difficult to find a place for them. And the last thing I want to talk about before we move on to the next topic is the use of heterophonics textures. This basically means having a melodic line embellished with a variation of it, where some of its notes can be omitted, added and or ornamented in a number of different ways. On this last section, for example, we have three layers the main vocal line. We can start again anew. Brass and woodwinds playing a variation of it. And strings with a more active part to build up momentum. And if you combine them, they sound like this. So we can start again anew. And here's a much simpler example of the same concept. On the bridge, we have this main part on the woodwinds, a more active variation of it on the second violin, with violas and cellos playing a harmony. Obviously, with all these new elements, the main part is going to get lost. So I'm simply bringing back the focus to the woodwinds by using piano and harp. It's really simple, but very, very beautiful and something you can try. And finally, the last step is going to be combining, you know, orchestral elements with a band. And this may be optional if you're going after a more retro kind of vibe. This was my starting point, actually, you know, before writing any of the orchestral parts, I laid down the rhythm section starting with drums and bass. I already had the piano that Chris played and these three parts combined with a few extra guitars, they kind of directed where the arrangement would go, at least in terms of drama. Let me give you an example. The bridge section that we just played has a tighter, groovier feel on the drums and bass with some guitar accents on two and four. This of course reflects into the orchestration where we now have a change of articulation, you know, a more staccato feel 
and accents happening in different places to be more in line with the rest of the arrangement. Knowing that the piece will later be orchestrated though, kind of moved me to keep it simpler than I would if I were to arrange a regular pop song. It still works nicely on its own and could be played by a band easily. It's just a bit bland and this is just so that we can easily build upon it without having too many parts clashing against each other and distracting from what really is important. Yeah, basically the rhythm section has the role of filling out the entire background. And once that's out of the way, it's basically impossible to screw up the rest of the arrangement. I mean, not impossible maybe, but you get the idea, you know, all that's left is basically embellishment, counter melodies and secondary elements. That's basically all I wanted to say, yeah. And Chris has some interesting insights as well, and that's coming up right now. So this might be a bit of a cop-out answer, but like a lot of the music I write in general, I think is in some way or form uh, inspired by that classic Disney style anyway. So it's hard for me to escape that entirely. But I think if we were to entirely look at it objectively, like the differences between a regular pop song and a Disney song, they're a regular pop song. I think the chord progressions are typically a lot simpler. Um, they usually use the diatonic chords. They don't venture too much into modal mixture. There's uh, not that many extensions and a lot of the in the chords and the arrangements are typically simpler as well. Maybe not so much emphasis on an orchestral style. And then the melodies, of course, are a lot simpler as well. Like you might get you know, a few steps here, the occasional leap, but generally it's going to be more, I guess, reserved. Um, and it's usually a lot more structured, I'd say. Whereas like a Disney song, the song itself kind of has to fit the flow of the movie as well. So where it ventures, where it kind of soars up high, all of that stuff is kind of determined by what's happening in the scene and stuff like that. But if it's a standalone piece of music, then you have a little bit more flexibility there. And I really try to show those differences between you know, the vocal melodies in the verse and then in the chorus, I really wanted to go up a little bit or at least have more of a structured melody there in the in the chorus that you can kind of latch on to, whereas in the verses, um, it's a little bit lower in the range, a little simpler as well. And then in terms of the chords, um, kind of used some modal mixture in there, uh, used the minor four for sure. I used a, doo -doo 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 -doo. I used a flat six. Um, I also used a flat seven as well. So those kind of those typical devices um, kind of create that slightly Disney sound, if you want to put it that way, I think. And you did do the, you know, the Disney modulation, like a half step above, <laughs> yeah, on the last chorus. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if uh, that's strictly Disney style or whatever, but like a a after the bridge, I kind of felt, you know, I don't want to repeat the same chorus again in the same key again. So um, I think just going up that little bit really pushes that energy level just a little bit and then it also opens up the orchestration even more as well cool cool so so what's your overall process for you know just writing a track like, like this do you start with the lyrics do you start with the music i can't remember exactly if i started with the melody first or the lyrics first in this case but the lyrics definitely played a big part in shaping how the melody went as well so usually when i'm writing it'll either be the melody and the harmony together first or i'll have the lyrics first and then you know i'll write the music around that but in this case i think they both came together pretty seamlessly at the same time and it was just a matter of keeping it simple but not not like too cheesy where you have like super obvious rhymes or anything like that like i uh, i think it's a mixture of the lyrics and the music having that just that balanced complexity that keeps it interesting and keeps it moving forward all right man thank you very much <laughs> thank you man it's been a pleasure appreciate it I've never seen the world before Everywhere it seemed to turn Another fight, another war Every nation burns And every night when I lay down The moment when I close my eyes My thoughts come back, they scream out loud Always asking why how long can we face away from the problems and the 
battles that we've got If we could work it out Set our differences aside We'll come together We'll go wherever we're needed We won't hide If we could work it out Understand what they go through Set the prison free so we can start again It's no wonder why everyone's scared Holding on to what they've got It's hard to see Life will be when the final battle's never fought It's like we don't try at all To see another's point of view We're quick to judge and hold a grudge Refusing something new How long can we face away From the problems and the battles that we've got If we could work it out Set our differences aside We'll come together We'll go wherever We're needed We won't hide If we would work it out Understand what they go through We'll come with peace Set the prison free so we can start again anew When will we learn to put each other before ourselves? When will we start to walk together and leave no one behind? We could turn from it all or we could take a stand Is aside, we'll come together, we'll go wherever we're needed, we won't hide. If we would work it out, understand what they go through, we'll come with peace, set the prison free so we can start again. Start again anew. All right, people, that's everything for today. As always, files for this project alongside more stuff like this are available on my Patreon. If you want to learn more about composing in general, check out my course 20th Century Orchestra Writing. Links in the description. Like the video if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one. Bye.